A gamer's personal taste dictates how they view a game. Could be something they like, could be something they get bored of, could be something they find offensive. If it ends up being that last one, you're in big trouble. It doesn't matter what you throw it at, mud sticks. The freedom of choice means that you don't have to play a super violent game, but the idea of other people playing and being influenced by this kind of content doesn't sit well with everyone. But it's more than that. Video games have had so much variety to them since their inception that you naturally have extreme ends of the spectrum that dabble with contentious subjects and themes. The word, one that I reckon is overused in all walks of life in the 21st century, is controversy. Personally, you've got to do a lot to offend me, and so while what I talk about on here doesn't really get me riled up, I'm more looking in from the outside and seeing how the world felt about these particular moments. I'll try and keep it unbiased, but if I feel that the reason for the controversy is bullshit, I'll let you know. Need to remember to think for yourselves occasionally. When looking for a game that dabbles with controversy, games from the Grand Theft Auto series bathe naked in a searing hot pool of it. Only really a recent thing, can't remember too much outrage at the first two GTA games, though to be honest, I was two years old when the first one came out. They were simple enough games, you steal cars, rob banks, drive around this free open world. Sure, people complained about how violent they were and Brazil outright banned the first game, but it was mostly down to excessive violence rather than anything interesting. And the Grand Theft Auto series is nothing if not interesting. So come the third game in the Switch with three dimensions and suddenly you've got a great opportunity to push things further. You can run people down in 3D, shooting people feels a lot more involved, and in general, exploration around this large city feels pretty amazing. What's, what's not to love? I mean, plenty, but it's designed for an older audience and if you park your young children in front of it and complain that it's negatively influencing their behaviour, you're doing it wrong. And yet, for all the controversy, it's mostly the broad stuff. If you want some proper drama, you have to look to something a little less gory, but an equally touchy subject when video games are the topic of discussion. Running down pedestrians gave San Andreas an M rating. A hidden minigame that can only be accessed through hacking the game which depicts sexual intercourse, that updated the rating to AO or adults only, a rating usually reserved for porn games. When this minigame, known as Hot Coffee, was found, the reaction was incredible. The game was withdrawn, relabeled, and modified to take out the minigame, lawsuits were filed citing a failure to disclose sexual content, eBay removed copies of the game claiming that it violated its policies, and Australia flat out banned the unaltered game. All of this came about from two chunky polygons rubbing up against each other. Anyone else find it weird that you can put dozens of bullets inside pedestrians and get one rating, but put one penis inside one person in an act of consensual dry humping and get a much worse rating? Seriously, only 29 games have ever been given an AO rating. And for what, this fucking spectacle? This isn't a time or place to explain the ins and outs of sexual intercourse, but you don't usually wear clothes. It's clearly where Ride to Hell Retribution got it from and no one cared about that game. If you're going to take one thing from GTA San Andreas, this probably shouldn't be it. There's a difference between censorship and self-censorship. One is designed as a suppression of free speech, effectively, you can't say or do that, while self-censorship is born out of not wanting to clash with the preferences and sensibilities of others. So I can say, and not offend anyone. It, it comes in handy sometimes. The important thing to take from whatever the hell that was is that one is enforced by someone else and the other is put in place to avoid any unnecessary confrontations. There's an argument whether self-censorship can even be considered true censorship, but the end results tend to be the same. What makes less sense is when a video game publisher censors their M-rated game because one scene is too mature. <laughs> South Park too mature. Oh, what a day that'll be. There's a few scenes in South Park The Stick of Truth that plays around with slightly risque material. And hell, it's a South Park game. Never really watched for cartoon, but I can pick up that there isn't really a line to cross. Early on in The Stick of Truth, your character is visited in the night by some aliens and is sent through the alien abduction flowchart. 
Aliens show up in a remote location, take you aboard their ship, and proceed to shove large objects up your butt in trying to probe you. Except this is where the line is drawn. Not so much in the US, but every other version had scenes modified or in the case of Europe had them taken out and replaced by a description of what is supposed to be happening and elevator music. It might look like some high legislative power got in the way, but in truth it was just Ubisoft's EMEA choosing to cut content in certain regions as a market decision. Which works when you're taking out Nazi imagery for German releases, but where's the discernible difference in reaction to anal probing between the US and Europe? It comes back later in the game when they start sucking out fetuses with vacuum cleaners, but by then the die was cast. The idea of censoring a South Park game still doesn't make any sense. If the humour is crude 99% of the time, why would you try and rein it in for a few scenes? The Australian version has a crying koala instead. You see what you did, Ubisoft? You made a koala cry. No amount of censorship in the world is worth that. If you play a Sonic game nowadays, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Sega dislikes all of humankind. The reality is that they simply don't know how to make a Sonic game anymore. Rewind back to the 90s and they had this locked down. Unfortunately for Sega though, the same year they released a sequel to the original Sonic the Hedgehog game, they were also putting their name to one of the most controversial games in living memory. Less about a sassy blue hedgehog and more about having scantily clad young women murdered in front of your eyes. Still sounds more appealing than Sonic Boom. Night Trap is a vampire game of a difference. No one sparkles in this game, but they are dressed up in S&M gear, so that's something. Apparently a bunch of young women who stayed at this house disappeared recently, and it's your job as a member of the Sega Control Attack Team, which yes, spells out scat, to keep an eye on the next group of ladies that have been wheeled off the conveyor belt and work out what's going on. It's kind of an interesting game at its core. You end up darting between hidden cameras to spot and capture the vampires. Kind of like a campy, mild version of Five Nights at Freddy's. The controversy comes from what happens if you let these gimpy vampires get their hands on one of these women. Sure, it's essentially a game over, but that didn't stop newspapers from misreporting that Night Trap encourages players to abuse women. At which point this questionable game was tainted forever. Most games like this exist with the controversy spread thin across the whole game, so narrowing it down to one particular moment isn't really possible. But with Night Trap, we've got a scene where a woman in a nightdress gets cornered in a bathroom by three of the vampires and has her blood sucked by some kind of weird dog catcher drill thing. It's a little grisly, but the acting isn't brilliant, so it comes off as more of an over-the-top black comedy than something you should take seriously. I can see why it was seen as controversial back in the day, but you can't ignore the fact that the game fucking chastises you for failing. I put the lives of those girls in your hands, and you screwed up! I'm pulling the plug on you before you do any more damage. And what did the game's designer make after this? Having apparently scarred gamers the world over, he moved on to the pet series, which is more of the same, actually. At least it wasn't called Night Traps. There aren't too many video game franchises out there that are under the microscope as much as Call of Duty. When you have rampant success that influences an entire era of gaming, people are naturally looking for pitfalls, something to knock it off its lofty perch. Besides, if you've got nothing to hide, you'll be fine. Just go about your business of indiscriminately shooting people. Just make sure those people have guns too. There's a big difference between shooting up a war zone and shooting up an airport. Yep, had to be on here somewhere. The first Modern Warfare game dabbled with shock value, but in the sequel, things got a little too real. In the mission No Russian, you're required to play as a deep cover CIA agent who has to walk around an airport while Russian terrorists massacre civilians. You can choose to join in if you like, but you can complete the mission without killing a single civilian, with there being no achievements related to any part of it. Still, the nature of the mission naturally drew attention from media outlets worldwide, claiming that partaking in a virtual terrorist attack trivialises real-world violence and gives the player a taste of what it would be like to commit a mass shooting, leading to countries like Russia removing the mission and others like Germany and Japan to heavily modify it and actively punish players should they kill a civilian. Of course, the climate surrounding acts of terrorism wasn't brilliant in 2009 and, as we've seen as recently as Wednesday, it's probably even worse today. But at no point does no Russian glorify what happens in the mission. Events are presented and the player can take away from it what they like. If you know it's coming and you can't handle it, you are given the option to skip it completely. Contentious? Yeah. Offensive? Not really. 
It's understandable that no Russian was met with such hostility, but I feel like it overshadows what a great mission it was. Not particularly fun, but a brilliant disconnect of your actions and the violence that unfolds in front of you. It's like an out of body experience, like the, like the beach scene at the start of Saving Private Ryan. Would have been even better if we didn't see it coming. Since their inception, video games have always strayed a little too close to the line when it comes to simulated violence. The difference between playing a violent video game and watching a violent film is the interaction. You're a member of a passive audience when viewing a movie as opposed to being in direct control of the action on screen in a video game. You get tons more feedback with a video game and at least on a surface level you can see why there was so much controversy surrounding just how much violent video games would affect the behaviour of the people who play them. Studies have since shown that there's no correlation between gory video games and how homicidal the player becomes having played it, but for a while in the 90s, skeptics were given plenty of ammunition. I still look at the fatalities in Mortal Kombat and wonder if the series would still be going if it weren't there. It's easy and perhaps appropriate to say that seeing someone tear a man's head off is both shocking and not really necessary. I get the idea of a finishing move, but you could probably finish off an opponent without getting this creative. But still, you've got to go to these lengths to test out the waters and push the boundaries of what is allowed in video games. The only problem is that these fatalities came at a point when this kind of mature content was unchecked and so anyone at any age could play it. That didn't go down well. Both Mortal Kombat and the previously mentioned Night Trap were mentioned in a hearing in 1993 that tried to show the problem with unregulated video games. Concerns were raised over the kind of behaviour these games were promoting and how they could desensitise a generation of kids to violence. And so measures were taken to control what games were readily available to the children of the world. Not so much to completely shut down violent video games, but to stop them from being played by children. They introduced a rating system, one that is still in use to this day, and video game violence was set aside for older audiences. So while the fatalities don't need to be there, their legacy is far greater than simply making Mortal Kombat a cult classic. And it put the responsibility squarely in the court of parents. No excuses, look after what falls out of your vagina. This we remembered Luigi and comparing the violence on offer in Mortal Kombat with Modern Warfare 2 is no contest. No Russian as a moment is way more gruesome and realistic. But I put it to you that any controversy in the history of video games that helps shape the industry for the better, I'd argue that's more significant, more, more noteworthy, more iconic. Who knew you could get so much done by ripping someone's arms off? Got a topic that you'd like me to discuss in a countdown? Leave a suggestion in a comment below and head over to my Twitter where I'll be holding a vote to decide the subject of the next countdown based off the best of your submissions. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that. The amount of research that went into this, I swear if we didn't live in a digital age, the library would be my second home at this point. Then again, if we didn't live in a digital age, I wouldn't be making YouTube videos, so yeah. Still looking for ideas for the Pokemon theme month I'd like to do later this year. Got a few ideas, but I'm always looking for more. Just to give me more to think about. You can never have too much to think about. Like how the hell I'm gonna make some of those videos in advance while still doing weekly countdowns. I've got plenty of time to think about that.